let's have a look at our questions. Right, question one. The following diagram, A, B and C, show an important process that occurs in a cell nucleus. Now, people, if we have a look at this, we've got diagram A and then diagram B and diagram C. Now, if you look at diagram A, here it is twisted. All right. And then it goes and it untwists and then it starts to open up. This opening up here is by an enzyme called um, helicase. All right. All right. He sorry, helicase. Oh, no, I'm going to start this again. I really am being a doofus here. All right, let's just do this here. It is helicase. If it ends in ASE, it probably 9 out of 10 times in life science is going to be an enzyme. All right, so helicase is what makes that DNA un untwist and then open up. So that all these nitrogenous bases along here are now exposed. Then, in diagram B, what do we have here? You see these little guys here? Those are little DNAs that are floating nucleotides that are floating around in the nucleoplasm. And they see, ha, here is a piece of DNA that's exposed. I can find a complementary base pairing. And then they pair and a little hydrogen bond forms. And we end up with a look here, a brand new... DNA molecule. So this is the original strand, that's the original strand, this is the original strand, and these are going to be new strands. And these new strands are going to be formed by the, these little nucleotides that float around these ones here. Then, if you see here, it carries on, here it's carrying on to do this. It's opening up because of helicase. You've got the DNA and the joining again so the recombining here is going to be because of DNA polymerase. See, ASE. And this is what's going to get these little hydrogen bonds to form. And the next thing, the DNA, the two DNA molecules are now going to start twisting. So you start off with one, it opens up, both strands of the DNA form uh, the template, all your free nucleotides in the nucleoplasm go and they join in. They join nicely with their hydrogen bonds. Remember, it's all complement, a complementary pairing. Remember always, adenine will bond to thymine and guanine will bond to cytosine. Your, your purines, and you remember it as pure as gold, your purines are adenine and guanine, and your per Pyrimidines are thymine and cytosine. Pyrimidine has a Y, thymine has a Y, and cytosine has a Y. Okay, always. And you will always have a pyrimidine to a purine and a purine to a pyrimidine. Okay, let's look at our questions. The first question is, name the process represented in this diagram. Well, we don't even have to go back to the diagram. It is D N a replication. So it's the copying of the DNA. Our next question, give the full name of the molecule represented in diagram A. The full molecule we know is going to be deoxyribose nucleic acid. Now Every, every learner on the planet knows DNA and RNA, but, and everybody, I mean, whether people are, know much or not, DNA, they know what DNA is, but they don't know what it stands for, and we expect you to know that in matric. So, deoxyribose, nucleic acid is DNA, and if it's ribose nucleic acid, then it is RNA. All right. Next, what do we have? During which phase, let me use a different color here, during which phase of cell division does this process occur? Well, we know that replication always occurs during interphase. Interphase is the longest part of the cell cycle. It takes ages because it's chemical and it is the duplicating of the DNA. 
so that all the other things can happen after that. All right. Now, provide a brief explanation. Provide a brief explanation of the process represented in diagrams A, B, and C. So, let's go back to our yellow. We're going to do A, and let's have a look at what A did. So, in diagram A, what have we got? We've got the untwisting because of helicase. And we have um, the unspiral, at least the unspiraling, and we have the unzipping. So that's easy enough. So we're going to say here, oi. So during A, we have the double helix DNA molecule. What does it do? The first thing it's going to do is it unspirals. And then it unzips. Now, if you recall last week, we did this in six steps. So there's one, and here's number two. It unzips as the weak hydrogen bonds break between the bases. complementary bases. Okay, so now they've opened, they open now. Okay, and remember, let's just do this. The, the enzyme that caused this was helicase. And this is mainly for the IEB kids that must know helicase. Um, for, for the National Senior Certificate learners, you just need to know that it is enzyme controlled. Okay, but it doesn't, there's no harm in telling you that it is helicase. Okay, now if we look at B, what have we got here? We're going to have our each strand, there's our original strand, and it's going to be attracting new nucleotides so that we have two different strands. So we go back and we say, oh man, <laughs> I thought this was going to work nicely. Okay, then in B, we're going to run out of space here. We have the th point three is each separate, uh, separate, separate um, DNA strand is a template. Okay, and this is important. So both strands are going to become templates and attract um, nucleot uh, nucleotides from the nucleoplasm um, for, sorry, complementary base pairing. Now remember, we're going to have Adenine will always bond with thymine and guanine will always bond with cytosine. That is your base pairing. Now we don't have space here, so I'm going to zip down. And let's just get more space here. Okay, and then for diagram C, they're now going to, what do we see? What did we see? The result is two new DNA molecules with, and this will be 0.6, with one new and one original strand. Okay, that is what's really important. Two new DNA molecules with one new and one original strand. Okay, both, sorry, this is 0 0.5, 0 0.6, both are, and I'm writing this in capitals, exact copies of the original DNA. Okay. So people, what's really important is that you have that strand unwinds, it unzips, 
new nucleotides come along that are present in the, nucle in the nucleolus and form complementary bases. Okay, when that's happened, everybody's happy and we can now move on. The DNA now has two original strands, two new strands, but they're identical to the original one. Okay, so let's have a look at our next question. Explain the significance of this. Well, first of all, produce two new identical DNA molecules. Okay, and the second is to ensure um, I identical um, genetic info in new cell to the original cell. Because remember, you're going to use this for growth and repair and replacement. So, you want the new cell to be identical to the old cell. I'm going to be two minutes here quick. I'm going to be about two minutes. We're going to tabulate two ways. Now, when they say tabulate, always make sure that you write, draw a table. So, they want named in question one, which will be a DNA replication. All right. And transcription. This is a really nice question. Okay, I'm going to abbreviate because we have to go to an ad break soon. So, first of all, DNA replication forms two identical DNA forms. Okay, whereas transcription, what is that going to do? Your DNA forms RNA. Okay, then we know that with DNA, adenine will um, bond with thymine because we have thymine in DNA whereas in, in, in transcription we're making RNA so adenine will bond with uracil or, or uh, form a complementary base pairing with uracil. And I'm going to give you one more, is that in DNA replication, we have both strands are templates. Okay, and in transcription, one strand becomes the template. All right, 